9.4 multiplying and dividing radical expressions. It's MA 912F.1.2. We're going to use the distributive property or the FOIL method to multiply radical expressions, determine the products of conjugates, simplify quotients involving radicals by, uh, by rationalizing the denominators, and cla uh, classifying the sums and products of real numbers. An example one says square root of 6 times the square root of 3. So we're going to basically say square root of 6 times 3 together. That becomes the square root of 18. Now 18, you want to make it as a product of a perfect square root and a not perfect square root. Well, 18, 9 is a perfect square root, 2 is not. You can take the square root of 9, that becomes 3, square root of 2 is left over. On B, in order for you to multiply radicals of, the different, of indexes, these have the same index values. So since they have the same index values, you're going to write 3 to the cube root, and it's going to be 5 times the 16. Well, 5 times 16, that is 5 times 6 is 30. 5 times 1 is 5, plus the 3 makes it 80. So I have cube root of 80. So you want to know if you can, if there is anything that can come out of it. So you're going to write it as pieces. 80 is 8, cube root of 8, times the cube root of 10, because I wanted a perfect cube. You can take the cube root of 8, that is the number 2, and then you have a cube root of 10 left over. On example 2, they want you to use the distributive property of multiplying. So it's easiest to do a box. I tend to do a box. Square root of 3 is on the outside. And then you have 2, and then a positive square root of 5 left over. So then you're going to multiply. The 1 that's in front of the radical 3, so the whole numbers, 1 times the 2, there's the 2, slide the radical 3 over. 1 times the 1 is positive 1, 3 times the 5 is square root of 15. So then your final answer is going to be 2 square root of 3 plus 1 square root of 15. You're going to do the same thing on the next one, so square root of 2 times 4 minus square root of 8. So I have square root of 2. Then we have a 4, negative square root of 8. So again, 1 times a 4 is 4 with a radical 2, minus sign. 1 times a one, negative 1 is negative 1. 2 times 8 is square root of 16. Before you can simplify, bring everything out. So I see 4 square root of 2 minus the square root of 16. Well, we can do the square root of 16. It's a perfect square root. So we have 4 square root of 2 minus 4. Um, for math purposes, I would rewrite the whole number first and then the part that has the radical. So negative 4 plus 4 square root of 2 to make it easier. On C, it says square root of 6 times the radical square root of 12 minus square root of 3. So the same thing. We have square root of 6 on the outside, square root of 12, negative square root of 3. So we see rat, there's nothing on the outside of the radical, so we're fine. So 6 times 12, that is square root of 72, minus square root of 18. So we have the square root of 72 minus the square root of 18. Okay, square root of 72, it ends in 2. It can be written as square root of 36, because it's a perfect number, and the square root of 2, minus 18. It's even. It's also a perfect number of 9 and 2. Square root of 36 is 6 with a radical 2 minus square root of 9 is 3 with a radical 2. At this instance, because the radicals match, 6 minus 3 is 3 and radical 2 is their attachment. On example 3, so we have a binomial times another binomial. So we have 2 square root of 7 minus 4 times the square root of 7 plus 1. So 2 times the 1, it's 2. Now 7 and 7, that's the square root of 49. Then it's times the 1, so we get 2 square root of 7. Negative 4 square root of 7. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. So we see... 
2 squared is a 49, plus 2 squared is a 7, minus 4 squared is a 7, minus 4. Square root of 49 you can do, that's 7, so I see 2 times 7. These two middle terms have the same attachment, so I had $2 to the spent form, short 2 radical 7, and then a minus 4. All I have to do is do the multiplication, 2 times 7 is 14, minus 2 squared is 7, take away 4. 14 minus 4, that is 10, minus 2 radical 7, and that would be your result of it. On B, it says 3 minus radical X times 1 plus radical X. So, and again, a binomial times a binomial. So, we're going to have 3 minus radical X, 1, and then positive radical X. So, 3 times the 1 is 3. 3 with X is 3 squares of X. Negative X, negative radical X with 1 is negative radical X. Negative one and one is negative sign. X and X is radical X squared. Those are two of them. So now we see three plus three square roots of X minus the square root of X minus the square root of X squared. We still have the three. These two middle pieces, they add together. So three minus one makes it two square roots of X minus, now, index value that we don't see is a 2, so if I divide by 2, 2 divided by 2 means a plain x comes out. So your final answer becomes 3 minus x plus 2 radical x. Okay, conjugates. They are binomials that only differ in the sign between the terms. So when you think of conjugates, refer back to difference of squares, a squared minus b squared. We have a plus b times a minus b. So for example, four and five, they want us to find the conjugate and then find the product of the two. So two minus the square root of five is our first one. So the conjugate, instead of a minus sign, is gonna be two plus the square root of five. So now they want to find us the product. Remember, this is a minus b times a plus b, which is a squared minus b squared. The a value in this instance is a two. The b value in this instance is a square root of five. So you're gonna use a squared minus b squared. Two squared minus radical five squared. So two squared is a four minus sign. When you see a square root raised to a power of two, they cancel out and you just get the inside come out. So four minus five is negative one is the answer. Okay, on B it says square root of three plus the square root of X. That is the first con piece and the conjugate would be square root of three minus the square root of X. So if you're using the same premise, in this instance, the A is the square root of three and the B is the square root of X. So we're gonna use A squared minus B squared. We have square root of three that we're squaring minus the square root of X that we're squaring. So again, you are breaking the bond. Radical three squared becomes just plain three. Minus sign, radical x squared just becomes x, so three minus x. On example six and seven, so now we see five squares of two over the square root of seven plus the square root of two. When we see division in purposes, you're gonna use the conjugate of the denominator, so we see square root of seven plus square root of two. We are multiplying the numerator and denominator by its conjugate, square root of seven minus the square root of two to both top and bottom. So we're gonna work with the numerator first. So we see five square roots of two and we're multiplying it by the square root of seven minus the square root of two. Okay, not. We have five square roots of two, square root of seven, negative radical two. So we have five times the one is five, two times seven is square root of 14, minus sign. Five, radical two and radical two is just gonna be a plain two because they multiply to become four, comes back as two. So we get five square roots of 12 minus 10. That is the numerator line. Then we're gonna go to the denominator line. 
And we know that we are using difference of squares. So the A value is square root of seven, the B value is the square root of two. So we're gonna use A squared minus B squared. So square root of seven squared minus the square root of two squared. Square root of seven squared just becomes seven, minus nine squared of two squared just becomes two. So seven minus two is a five as your denominator. So numerator said it was five square root of 12 minus 10 over five. Before you say this is your final answer, notice that five on the outside, 10 on the outside, five on the outside, they're all values of the same. So five, five divided by five leaves you with square root of 12. 10 divided by five leaves you with a two because you're taking five away by division. We look at B. I said six over square root of X minus two. Again, the conjugate in this instance is going to be square root of X plus two for numerator and denominator. So again, we're going to start with the numerator line. So we see six times the radical X plus two. So it becomes six squares of X plus 12. So our numerator line is found. Then you're gonna to go to the denominator line. So remember, difference of squares. The A value is gonna be the square root of X. The B value is gonna be the number two. And you're gonna use A squared minus B squared. So radical X squared minus two squared. Radical X squared is just X minus two squared is a four. So there's my denominator. So our final answer is going to be six radical X plus 12 over X minus four. And you can't do anything else to it. Okay, on C it says two minus the square root of three over square root of six plus square root of two. So again, the conjugate in this instance is gonna be square root of six minus the square root of two, the top and bottom. So now when we start with the numerator line, we have a binomial times a binomial. So we're gonna see two negative radical three. We have radical six, negative radical two. So we see two square roots of six, negative two square roots of two, negative square root of 18, and positive square root of six. So we see two square roots of six come out, minus two square roots of two, negative square root of 18, positive square root of six. 18 can break down to a perfect number and a not perfect number. So we know we have the first part stay the same, the second part stay the same. 18 is now square root of nine times the square root of two plus the square root of six. First part stay the same, second part stays the same. Square root of nine is three with the radical two, positive six. Now all I have to do is combine your like pieces. So these middle two numbers can combine. So we get two square roots of six. I'm short two, I'm short three, I'm short five square roots of two plus six, this is the numerator line. The denominator line, the A value is the square root of six. The B value is the square root of two. So you're gonna do A squared minus B squared. Square root of six squared minus the square root of two squared. So square root of six is six, minus square root of two is two, and we end up with a four. So our numerator line, we said was two square roots of six minus five square roots of two plus six over four. Verify, so I said we have a two here and a six here, and that's okay because the bottom is a four, but we cannot reduce anything because that middle term has a five, which is not divisible by four. Example eight says one divided by square root of x minus x square root of x plus one. So you're gonna use the conjugate. In this instance, it's gonna be square root of x 
plus square root of x plus 1 to numerator and denominator. So the numerator line is just 1 times everything. So we say square root of x plus square root of x plus 1. That is the numerator line finalized. The denominator line, the a value is the square root of x and the b value is the square root of x plus 1. So you're going to do a squared minus b squared. So square root of x squared minus square root of x plus 1 squared. So we get x come out minus x plus 1 come out. Notice that the x's cancel out. So you're left with a value of 1. So our answer is just going to be the square root of x plus square root of x plus 1.